steals the Soul Stone for sure. Sacrificed a lot. Right. And then uh, Freakazoid's the Power Stone, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, Kus is the Time Stone, because <laughs> he is timeless. <laughs> and also the, the fact that he struggles with the clock sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that one. <laughs> that one was pretty good. I like that. So, uh, uh, pistol round underway. Ghost Gaming on the CT side of... Mirage, and they were talking about mid control here. It looks like Infinity instead are going to play an A strike with a lurk down through the underpass. Kusta does get that first kill. That was the underpass player, so it's really a one dimensional attack for Infinity into the site right now. Is a withering, blistering shots that are coming through those smokes, but it's just harassing nice fire shot. until Wardell sees the crack in the top of the smoke right here between the stairs. And now Infinity are looking to hang on. What a beautiful pop flash right there from Steel, but Cruzen is able to sacrifice his teammate Spamzy to take two with him at least, but it is just points. 1v3, Wardell so wounded right now, but he's the centric player, the least exposed player at that, and Kusta manages to pick off the kill. Ghost take round one. Yeah, it was a pretty standard piss around coming out from Infinity there, moving very quickly towards the A bomb site, flooding into the CT spawn, but Kusta is able to take off some really nice shots there to actually keep Ghost Gaming in that retake position, as well as Wardell from the staircase picking off a player above that stairs smoke. So a nice round from Ghost Gaming. Got a little bit scary there as we saw Cruzen move into CT spawn and pick up a few kills. But other than that, it will be Ghost Gaming closing out the round and starting off 1-0. All right. And that's the start that we anticipated, but it was probably the best chance that Infinity had to get a good leg up on Ghost Gaming. They are going to go over the deco. No armor, just deagles. And they are hoping to reach out and backhand somebody at range. They do have players that are about to encroach down into the underpass side, so that will be a two-pronged two attack into mid, yep. top and lower, uh, to at least gobble up some of this map control that they so desperately need right now. But they are taking a lot of damage. No casualties quite yet, but Wardell comes out for a second wind. Oh, but from underneath, Cruzen will give him the shuriken uppercut and remove Wardell. Look at Steel, though. He's going to get very aggressive on the edge of this. Is going to eat some massive Molotov damage down to 67, but he is able to retaliate on Cruzen and get back at him for that kill on Wardell. Meanwhile, Kusta has aggressed through those B tunnels, so that's going to be a communication towards his teammates, letting them know, hey, they're heading over towards A. I haven't made contact with anybody. Let's tighten up on that portion of the map. And Infinity will actually be moving into eh, a semi-sort of stack right now. Yeah, Frikus is in those apartments, but Freakazoid, I mean, without mid-control, they, they could come catwalk. So Freak actually goes to the B site. Not this, a bad idea yeah, either. This will leave a 2-2 defense right now. Steel's looking towards Connector, while Neptune has all the realm out in front of him for A main and Palace. He has made contact. So Steel is able to at least stand up before he's knocked back down immediately. It's a three on three, and the deco so far is worth it. But the bomb can't be planted without any survivors, and it leaves Davies alone. Neptune from range will make sure that those unarmored targets are easy peasy to take down. Yeah, I really like that smoke from Neptune. Dropping in towards the middle of the site, that allows him to not have to worry about that headshot angle as soon as you come out of a ramp that a lot of people like to take advantage of there. So he blocks that angle off, and from that point, he's going to isolate the Infinity players, essentially force them now to come in towards that default area if they want to get a safe plant off, and that's where Neptune's able to strike, picking up three kills on the round, we will see Ghost Gaming go up to a 2-0 lead here as Infinity will be buying rifles in efforts to uh, get their first on the board. Yep, if they can. And we'll see what ends up happening, where the, where the chips may fall when Infinity's first rifle round has concluded. But we do have a timeout right now uh, to uh, figure out some tech issue, which we did start off with a little bit of one, but we were able to get it out of the way pretty quickly. So we're probably going to capitalize on that and finish that off. Kusta's actually wielding the MP5. Again, we don't really see that often at all. Uh, you might as well get the MP7, uh, really, at that point. Aren't they virtually the same gun? I mean, it's down to preference, but yeah. since the MP7's been around for so long, people just prefer the MP7. I like to see an MP5 every now and then, though. I'm not a fan of the MP5, but Kusta likes it. I liked it in Source. I mean, I liked it in 1.6. Yeah, well, yeah. But it's not 1.6. It's not Source. Yeah, we can bring those days back, dude, you and me. Uh, no, Start I've moved on. 1.6. I've, I've forgotten those. Uh, I've forgotten those years. <laughs> yeah. And now I've moved on to CS:GO years. Right, right. And even those, I'm starting to forget now as I get older. Dallas. Kind of. You quote unquote retired, and you coming back into the right. game every now. We'll not talk about that. <laughs> I'm gonna continue we'll to talk about I'm gonna that. continue to pull your chain on that one. Call me uh, Brett Favre. Brett Favre. That's yeah. right. That's a good comparison. Just, uh, yeah, I'll keep playing. Whatever. Yeah. IGL for the teams you play on. Yeah. Yeah. There you Brett go. Favre, same way. You're virtually the same guy. I've never okay. seen you. I've yeah. never seen you two in the same room. <laughs> 
Oh man, so it is a little bit of a tech issue uh, that we are waiting on right now, but let's just discuss some of Infinity's stronger points here. If they want to find success in this map, what, what do you think they're going to have to exploit out of the Ghost Gaming side? Uh, the way I predicted it was, I said I figured Infinity's better chance here is T side rather than CT side. Even though it's a CT sided map, I feel like Infinity are, are going to have better odds when it comes to being able to group up and strike into a site against Ghost split defense. So. Your entry fraggers aren't that shabby. Uh, points is pretty good. Spams is the entry fragger for Infinity, and I've seen him do rather well. If we end up in the instance where Ghost Gaming are going to continue to rack up rounds and Infinity uh, are, are struggling, I almost expect Infinity to play faster, play it more into a direct rush roll. We've seen Spamsy in, in a month ago or so. Uh, I recall him playing Dust 2 with a Mac 10, running headlong down mid doors and actually be, making good use of it. And okay. Even on Inferno as well. Uh, sorry, on Mirage, right where we're at. Jumping into the B site with a Mac 10, which is pretty par for the course. He's not bad. He just he just needs a little bit to work with, and that's the entry frag. That's basically a, a coin flip for him in this case. Yeah, this is it's essentially what I brought up at the start um, before we actually got into the match. The fact that a lot of these players playing rank G, playing rank S on the ESCA system, so they're used to the North American play style. They're used to playing against other North American players. They have a similar mindset when it comes to how they should approach rounds. Yeah, they might not be as tenured as Ghost Gaming. They might not be attending to tournaments like dreamhack tours or i buy power but at the same time they still have the capability of hitting some great shots what are your thoughts of james's threads right here i wish we could see his lower body he's actually a he's got a white top and white pants he's looking crisp he's looking he's looking fresh he's looking pretty crisp all right I, I, if i was wearing white top and bottom i'd be scared around the barbecue sauce that we just had for the for the food here i mean that was a bit maybe it'll, be, it'll get messy <laughs> white and white is dangerous man oh man I've never, I've never done white on white. I neither have I. I mean, that's that's a bold move. There he is, right there. But uh, I mean, those the threads for ghosts, they got good ones. Whether it's white on black or black on white, there are those pants you're talking about. Look yeah, at this. Look at that. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Confident, dude. I could never pull off white pants. <laughs> Steel's probably talking about them right now. Can't believe, like, I can't, I believe, can't believe. Look at these James, awesome white pants. These, <laughs> these white pants are amazing here, and they match his top. How is he doing this? Right? How yeah. is he? How is he able to pull this find outfit me, off? Find me a better dressed coach. Let's have a blast too. Oh my god! That's I just came into you screaming. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, at least you can hear me. Are you ready? Anyways, oh man. I mean, all right. So I, I, I gave my theory on how Infinity are going to be able to pull this out of the hat. What are your thoughts? Um. Honestly, it's like I said, man, it's going to be having to get into Ghost Gaming's face. They can't let Ghost Gaming dictate the pace of this first half. They've got to be able to say right off the bat, hey, whatever peaks you're going for, we're going to punish you on. And if they aren't going to punish Ghost, Ghost is going to continue taking those types of peaks, whether it be flying out middle. There, in the previous round, you saw Steel with full confidence peeking towards lower, actually taking Molotov damage in the process. So Infinity needs to begin to punish plays like that if they want to actually make Ghost play a little bit more passive. But look at this, very aggressive to start this round. Hey, we back into the game. Ooh, good damage. Kusta's probably wondering, how am I taking this kind of damage through that smoke? He will bang a, a grenade off the wall, land it right in Points' front door. And the rifle advantage actually belongs to Infinity here. And the damage exchange early on, but mid control does belong to Ghost. All right, Davey's able to take down Steel now. That's going to prompt the Ghost side to fall into a very passive setup now. Not looking for any regression. We might see Kusta hop into Connector here momentarily, but it should be Freakazoid looking to even this one up. Oh, they're dangerous from Connector as well. Freakazoid turns, catches the first, and then Kusta swings for the second from that was Connector. Great. That's when Ghost, I felt, was most vulnerable right there, but instead they come out on top of it and earn the man advantage right on back, and the damage advantage that I said at, at Infinity had earned early on. And this might start to pay to the cadence of, of what we had said earlier, the analysts had said, of when you're against and your underdogs this big, sometimes you end up not playing your own game. You play a little bit more timid. Infinity just lost those two players, and nobody moved. There was no chance of a, re uh, a, a refrag on that. Yeah, it was just great timing out of Ghost. Freakazoid taking down the player, being boosted up, then Kusta peeking down as well from that connector at the same time. There's not much opportunity, and now Points gets taken down as he's idle in towards that middle area. Mobs as well as Davies will be moving into this eighth bomb site. Yeah. 
Acousta's actually got a pretty cool thin angle in there as well underneath. They might think he's smoked off. It's actually a CT smoke designed for exactly that, for the MP5 play. All players from Infinity are going to be wiped out, and that might be uh, what you do for the MP5. You, you make this defensive smoke in front of you. You have no tracer rounds due to the suppressor, and it's really hard to hear that MP, MP5. So, all right, Ghost Gaming on top of things. All right, Infinity. Now, this is the, this is what I'm talking about here. Freakazoid able to take down the first player in cruising, but Kusta's there at the exact same moment because he realizes if there is somebody being boosted up, Kusta's, uh, Freakazoid's going to be able to draw that attention of the person who is helping out with that boost, and that's going to provide a free kill towards Kusta, and that's exactly how it plays out. Ghost Gaming now going up 3-0 here on the Infinity side. Back to the deco, and... More grenade damage coming in that's going to ring the ears of Cruzen. I think points as well took a, took a grenade up there too. Cruzen though did spot Kusta. A wild spray is there, but he's, he's rewarded with some RNG. So is Spamzy out there too. So Infinity have gotten their first two on the board for the round, and the, the one that was underneath window is a recoverable weapon. All right. Down into a three on five now here as Infinity looking to consolidate their efforts off of some great shooting here, moving back towards the A-bomb site. Neptune the only man on the scene. Ghost is actually anticipating a B hit, so you're actually going to see the rotation of Wardell moving into that B-bomb site, leaving just Neptune now to defend A. It is against, for the most part, unarmored targets. He's got the first, looking to chip away on the next. You can see he's pretty passive in this, just trying to get some lucky spray through because he needs some reinforcements to come in. He's starting to lose some health. He needs to start to back off, gets himself a fresh magazine in, but he's going to get pressured. Malbs takes the kill. This is now a 2v4, starting to dis, uh, dissolve for Infinity, though, as they haven't planted the bomb quite yet, but the bodies are still coming at him, getting fed. It's going to be Freakazoid to try and entry into this A site, 1v3. He's got Spamsy locked up, but as he tries to swing out wider and wider, it makes the angle thinner and thinner that Spamsy is able to cross and disappear. Yeah, real overconfident round from Ghost Gaming. They're taking a lot of unnecessary fights within that round. They are going to go down. Neptune, really, they're only shining light in it. He's going to fall towards CT spawn off a great pop flash. We see Wardell rotate in. He tries to make something happen, keep his team in the round, but he gets taken down. And with that, Freakazoid must save. Yeah, it almost. I almost thought Ghost Gaming were actually going to manage that, that hold on the defense with Neptune back behind the ticket booth. He knocked off the first player, did good damage to the follow-up couple players, but just didn't quite have the the bodies left. Those first two openers from Infinity with the Deagles were really the nails in the coffin for Ghost. So they will back up. They'll try and punt on this round. Wardell's got himself an AWP, and that's it. No armor behind that as well. And it looks like Kusta's got enough to buy chest armor as well. So they are going into this round against AKs for the most part. So yep. that, that head armor wouldn't matter there, but there are AUGs in play. But they have now a field day against the very lacking head armor for Ghost side. Yeah, Infinity definitely in the advantageous position in terms of firepower going into this round. They're not going to approach it too quickly here. You're going to see Cruzen throw that lurk out smoke towards the B platform, create a little bit of a pressure situation towards Wardell, who's got that op in hand. But nothing other than that will be happening for the Infinity side. A very slow round coming up from them. Nice aggression coming out from Wardell, however. He's made his way into B-Tunnels. Oh, and he's going to get taken down. I think Cruzen just spotted him on that aggression. Yeah, they used a pop flash to get him in there, but he then went back towards the couch. So he had to re-peek that angle, and he was getting spammed in that, so he thought his wall wasn't safe to hide behind, so he peeks out and ends up catching a shot to the face. Now with the loss of Wardell, you see a push in A main for the CT side. And they will try and chop up this aggression from Infinity. They've got one player in the palace. Actually, they're going to back off of this, leaving this Steel is up on the catwalk. Look at this spot. That could work wonders. That This would be right when they're rounding the corner when they feel most comfortable for setting up smoke executes. But the bomb's still back in T-spawn. He might stop the bomb on this push. That's exactly what's going to happen. The bomb does look like he's going to be throwing over a little bit of an A smoke. We're seeing the Infinity players make their way up connector, but Steel's position is so strong here, Dallas. He needs to let Davies go by first. They aren't even going to check. He needs to strike they even both. Check. They're both going to cross at the same time. Steel is above and behind him. He's going to pounce. He's got the first. Can he fade away for the second? The front line of the site is falling, but Steel holds on to the bomb, and the longer he can, he can bait more time. Takes the fight, but the UMP is just not enough. 2v3 right now, taking damage from the stairs. Freakazoid can't locate those shots. Kusta has recovered Wardell's op from the B apartments and tries back into yet another 1v3. Yeah, very unfortunate round there for Steel. He does 
end up getting the bomb down, but only having a UMP means he can't really take the fight with the second player. He gets taken down. At the same time, Freakazoid rolling into stairs or into the site doesn't anticipate the stairs player, and he too shall fall, leaving only Kusta now in this position with an AWP in tow. He should be going for the save momentarily. Yeah, if things even turn south, for Infinity on there against Kusta. If Kusta got the first kill, you had Karuzin that was still in mid, and he had primed a flashbang over the wall into the A site. So then your your extra player, whether that be Davies or points, would be able to get the trade frag immediately thereafter. So Infinity have secured themselves a second round on their T side so far. Kusta holds on to the op, but I doubt there's much coming in behind this one, though. It's basically going to be op plus a couple pistols. I definitely could see Kusta getting aggressive here with that AWP, maybe towards halls, maybe very quick towards middle as well or even shutting down the B tunnels early on. But either way, here's this kill that I was talking about. Steel able to take down the first, but because he's got a UMP, he really can't take another engagement here. You see him get the advantage over Davies, but he doesn't have the firepower to actually compete with that. At the same time, Freakazoid finds one, but it's taken down by points, and Infinity are making a very competitive game of this. So far, so good. So Kusta will be going towards B tunnels to shut it down here to start. Here come some grenades his way. Oh, he's got the first. That's Spamsy. Now, Infinity should know. It was a saved off from the last round, but everything else should be pistols. At worst, pistol armor. They know exactly where Ghost Gaming's money lies, and they are at least setting the, the trap for the A's site, but it's safe taking their time. A lot of time. In fact, Kusta's AWP has repo repositioned into Ticket Booth. Yeah, that's exactly it. Kusta now moving his AWP over towards that A bomb site here. It makes the hold that much stronger for the Ghost Gaming side. I don't actually anticipate that Infinity will expect this. At the same time, Steel has now aggressed B tunnels, almost cementing the fact that they are going towards A, but Mobs get spotted now, so Steel will move back towards him, take him down, and then it's going to be on Kusta to make this happen. Yeah, they'll try and pinch him. It's very obvious that this is a B fake. Kusta got that first kill, there you go. and he's looking for the second as well. Mobs will die, but that's going to be a, a rifle in tow soon enough. A grenade just blasts Kusta out from behind the triple box, but already the damage has Neptune. been dealt. You've got two players left, Davies and Points, that are there, and Steel's on his way. Look how passive they are. Yeah, Neptune's just staring Points down. This is great. He's going to be the ace up the sleeve for Ghost Game. Go ahead, plant that bomb. I dare you. Neptune will come out. Points is struggling to find the site. Gets it. Oh! Hey, it gets traded out anyways. Davies is going to find two, looking for two more with 22 seconds. It's all deuces. Davies trying to find cover while he presses a fresh mag in. Not going to be enough. Ghost Gaming save the op again, and they come out with a free rifle on the round. Yeah, Eco really, off the, really off the back of Kusta there, allowing themselves to get that B-Hall's control, create that pressure on Infinity now, where you saw Mobs hanging around, trying to create a little bit of a fake. And then from there, they actually move it over towards the A-bomb site while having Steel push up through those lower yeah, B tunnels and get an easy kill onto Mobs. I like how quickly they reacted. They spotted Mobs up there with a the jump peek, and then Steel was already behind him, so it's, okay, let's pinch this guy. And they recognize at that point it's obviously a fake, and they won both sites at that point. So Ghost Gaming are able to just gather the intel on the very, very slow approach from Infinity. A couple rounds in a row for them that have been pretty passive. Now they're going to play a little bit more active. Catwalk, fast play. Steel gets the first two kills, and Mobs runs on headlong in. And as a matter of fact, Mobs and points will pair up to get the kills on the B site. This might be a bomb plant. It is. Yeah, and also Catwalk is smoked off as well. Can Steel get the edge of the smoke? He can. So he is going to be able to clear off as Wardell does take points down in the side. It's on Mobs here, who's moved towards Ska Pillar, but Neptune's able to take him down. Another round on the board for Ghost Gaming. Now, I did see something in there. Even though Ghost Gaming managed a, a pretty good retake, okay. I saw something I didn't like. What did you see? Wardell, as the bomb was being planted, jumped out of the market and was looking for a fight as fast as he can, well ahead of the remaining team that was coming in from behind and trying to operate on a long flank through the apartments or what have you. They were looking to end the round right there. So yep. I want to see I want to see Steel pull back on the leash a little bit, get the team to play a little bit more conservative, a little bit yeah. more diligent. I, I assume it's a little bit looser just because of the fact that they know how much of a yeah, underdog the opposing I mean, team is, right? So they are going to be playing a little bit looser. I, I can even attribute the fact that they're playing loose to the fact that they lost those two rounds yeah. in the previous situation, right? Um, but even within that round, Infinity gifting Steel those frags is they're only going to smoke the bottom of the connector, and Steel just sees right above that smoke. 
So here's Spamzy's Mac-10 that I was talking about before. He's up in the apartments trying to work around this smoke. Oh, as a matter of fact, with that smoke there, I just remembered that Ghost Gaming, when they come to their T side, they have a gnarly smoke for just this B site. It's pretty gross. Spamzy does fall. It will be traded out for Steel's life, and the rifles now are in tow. So Spamzy sacrifices himself to upset some of the aim. But again, Infinity come in so passively, so slowly. Look at Gusta streaming through the site, jumping around the fire. Loses his life trying to take a pretty fancy fight. But right now, Infinity know that they have no room to work with. They have players that are still up in the apartments. Got a kill up there. They need to take a fight through the front line. I would almost rather see them run headlong into the market and take the fight up front, knowing that they give a player on the flank. But it is just cruising in a 1v2. The bomb's behind him, not in hand right now. And he spots Wardell. But Wardell having the one-shot wonder makes it a 6-2 score. Yeah, Infinity with a little bit of hope within that round being able to entry their way in, turn it into a 2v3, but as soon as uh, points goes down with do that bomb, like it all becomes too emergency. hard there in the end. Wardell, some great shooting out of him. It will be the round going once again to Ghost Gaming. Yeah, so Ghost have a smoke on B-side platform. That yep. is, we talked about that Their T-side smoke. Month. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. There's a T-side smoke on platform that allows Steel to get three different angles. And each angle that he checks, the other two angles that he's clear against due to the smoke. He just works with the smoke. And, well, I can't wait to see it in the next half uh, after trying to butcher the description to you all in the chat. But it's a it's a, it's a a thing of water. Here, let me, let me try. Guys, it's a B balcony smoke that smoke. isolates bench, van, as well as Scott Pillar. That's why you're my color commentator, <laughs> man. We work well together. Maltov into the palace, but nobody's home. Instead, it's going to be a four-man push through a main with one coming Here we late go. through connector. Steals on this angle, and it's such a strong yeah. spot against uh, the, the typical smokes that come out for stairs and smoking off jungle. I mean, it, you almost have to spam that position, anticipating the push. So Steel now in sandwich, a great grenade that lands right on top of Spamzy, and he gets pierced by the AWP. So now Davies out of the uh, the wrong uh, wrong area. Code Bombs right not now. even planned to default. Or, sorry, by triple box here. It's yeah. planted default, so Davies won't even have a chance for this. On top of that, Ghost Gaming, no. And Wardell's able to take down Davies yeah. for Ghost Gaming I 7. Mean, Infinity got a bomb plant. That's all they were looking to do right there. They, they had bought a couple pistols on that round, and we're just like, yeah. hey, thanks for the bomb plant. We don't care where it's planted. Thanks for the 800 bucks. So 7-2 to two is our scoreline here as Infinity picking up two rounds towards that middle part of the first, or the early part of the first half here. As we move towards the latter parts of this first half, Infinity really coming up short. They have taken a timeout, so hopefully this is the discussion that they need to start coming back into this game. But Ghost Gaming right now, full of momentum. Yeah, and this is what we anticipated. I, I was really proud of Infinity for getting those first two rounds so early. And as a matter of fact, it looked like they were going to get more than two rounds. But it was Ghost that managed to win their own eco against Infinity, uh, who had won their, an eco of their own. So it's been back and forth. That ends up being a wash. And uh, Ghost Gaming have managed the 7-2 offsuit on their CT side. Not bad for Infinity, but this is going to be a rifle round that they desperately need. They, yep. They're going to make the decision of, okay, do we want the AWP in play? They've so far uh, decided against it. It's four AKs and a Krieg that's going to be fielded for Infinity. All right, and as freeze time gets undone here, let's look at the AWP of Wardell and where it's going to be heading. Right towards window. Nice little Molotov in the corner to just give him a one-way smoke if anybody tries to actually smoke off window. Infinity, on the other hand, won't be taking it too fast in this round. A little bit of a default is what they're going to look towards to start this round off. A little bit of grenades just being traded at a distance into the B apartments. Ghost Gaming set up with the same setup that they had early success in. That little bit of crossfire, uh, this time between Steel and Wardell on that connector and top mid presence. And right now it looks like top mid or mid won't be able to shoot down into the underpass. Steel now is going to be able to take this fight. Spots the shoulder. Spamzy's able to get around the corner quick enough to push Steel off the angle. Yeah, there will be a smoke coming into window as well. So that's going to push Wardell off of that window angle. Maybe even have him rotate over towards that B bomb site or even ticket booth now into the round. Kusta's all the way up to couch in the apartments. Flashbang. Does rattle off in front of him. That's going to make him a little bit nervous. But it does look like it's going to be an A execute anyway. Possible lurk from Spamzy, but he's the uh, the entry fragger. So he's going to end up throwing in smoke from T-Spawn into mid and then join his team in force over towards the A site. Steals in yep. sandwich. 
Neptune's back towards Ticket Booth, as is tradition. They've got some extra help from Wardell. He's currently at CT watching the murder hole, make sure that the window isn't taken, but that's not going to be the case. Really up to your first two riflers. Are they going to Molotov off anything? They're looking for the dry peek out into the site here. Smokes are coming out, but they don't Molotov off Steel. It's oh, going to be got Steel lined up. with the double. He's got him lined up, but he can't get the next one. But that should be more than enough. Neptune finds his. He's back to the ninja box. Davies unable to get the spray control down on the Krieg. And only one casualty for Steel, and that being Steel. Still a huge net positive for Ghost Gaming's economy. Is now they've got plenty saved up if there's a rainy day that comes that Infinity managed to pick up a round. All right, eight to two is our scoreline. Here's this double there from Steel. I mean, Infinity had the opportunity to Molotov off everything they wanted to. You saw nades being thrown by them, but they choose not to Molotov off Sandwich, and Steel's going to make them pay for it. Kind of similar to the round where they chose not to smoke off Catwalk, yep. and Steel was hanging out in Connector, just punishing them. Here's the fast play. I predicted this. I said if Infinity aren't going to get rounds, they're going to continue to play faster and faster and faster. And Neptune takes a little bit of a fight here. He's going to get spammed through the ticket booth. But really, there's no ground to be stood on here for Spamsy. Yeah, you've made a little bit of a beachhead, but you've got no utility to work with for yourself. So you're going to take a fight out in no man's land, and he's got two. It's back to a two on two. Now he's going to put himself up on top of a pedestal here with a hopeful flashbang that goes up towards ticket booth. Both CTs are here. Great shot from nice Neptune, shot. though. And now Points is going to have to carry the baton as it's been passed to him from Spamsy. And I do think they know Points has made his way up through the connector. Now Kusta wide swinging out. Points hears all of this. Moves his way into the smoke, he Dallas. His, I think they saw his feet. But he comes out, tries to transfer rapidly to Kusta, but he will trade it out. Expensive round for Ghost, but it was a rifle round at the end of the day for Infinity, so those are acceptable yeah. losses for As Ghost. well, at the same time, Ghost is able to recover that op. So that's one less expense that they're going to have to worry about moving into this round. And this is it from Spamsy right here. Able to take down Freakazoid now. The smoke comes out. He's going to go and actually try and move into it in that position. It was a good attempt, but not much came of it. Yeah, uh, close only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes. There are hand grenades in this game, but they don't really do all that much damage, you know, against armor. Whatever. <laughs> Infinity are going to go for AKs yet again. They've been on Max Lone. Well, Max Lone. Us. Might as well be alone. Uh, for quite some time, but it's not going to be enough for Frank Utility. Hey, there's a good shot. Nice shot, this is, this is where I was talking about Ghosts are looking a little bit too cocky. Uh, they're, they're taking peaks that they are, aren't going to take peaks against if, say, it's Cloud9 or something. You know, They are a little bit out of bounds, but it's it's a, a calculated risk for Ghost. They've thought about that. All right, looking at this round right now, Infinity off of that pick. Haven't really done much with it, though. They're still running this default. We're nearing the middle mark on the round here, or midpoint on the round as we pass the one-minute mark. Freakazoid. Freakazoid. Freakazoid having help from Wardell. He's watching he's top grab mid. It. Oh, there they look go. up. Ward uh, Freak still holds the high ground. Usually go. that's a fire and forget and leave. But no trades. Nobody at top mid. Yeah. And Wardell still scoped in. Now he's going to draw blood against points. And this is the issue. That yep. that mid take, I mean, it would have been perfect if they just threw their top mid smoke, started to flash off, blocked Wardell's vision. Freakazoid would have got off that spot because now Wardell isn't covering his back, and they would have been able to come up through lower B, look for the window boost, maybe pinch on connector. But because of that, they get absolutely punished by Freakazoid in a very unorthodox spot that generally doesn't happen. That's right. And this is a bold move for Davies. Wow, what a shot from him. He just comes out the smoke, just takes a slow stroll through it. And now the A strike continues. Okay. And Infinity are racking up bodies. Neptune's still over here. Nice shot through Malves and through the box oh, no. as well. All shots went right to the dome. And Neptune, as he always stands over there towards Ticket Booth, starts to leave his position, advance into the site as the bomb gets start to plant so it, knowing that he's got a chance. Yeah, unfortunately for Infinity there, I mean, just when you think they're going to be able to find some success in the round, some great kills going on in towards the bomb site, Neptune starts spamming your bomb planter down with time ticking away. On top of that, there was a flank starting to develop. There was really little to no chance that Infinity was going to be able to pull it off in a 1v2 just due to the fact that Neptune was able to take the bomb, burn some time, and allow that rotation as well to start developing behind the final Infinity Sports member. Back to Deagles. One CZ is in there. Uh, but you're right. Uh, the past couple rounds, there's been a little bit of lack of utility on the approach for Infinity. This is an acceptable loss for them. They, they don't have all the utility to play with. So they end up with dry peaks into top mid and they die for it. Four for zero exchange. It's a field day for everybody downrange. And 
the last man standing. Great shooting from points with a CZ. Dink, dink. And he might be gone. able to recover this weapon. Yeah, the weapon. Maybe not the bomb. It goes, look at Ghost's position. They know where the bomb is in mid. Oh, he's completely but, pinched in. Yeah, there's. they've got Market in Neptune, which is where the kill is going to actually feed in from. Freakazoid had Catwalk, and then Wardell and Steel both had the apartments. So there was no leaving that those apartments. Yep. 11 to 2 is our scoreline. Infinity, really, from the start of the half to now, not finding too much success. Those two rounds that they found, we saw overextensions from the Ghost Gaming side. Really heavy play coming out from the CTs, trying to get in front of them. And Infinity punished them for it. Now Ghost is tightened up. We're still seeing a little bit of looseness within the Ghost Gaming play style, but they've gotten tighter, and Infinity are finding no openings whatsoever. Yeah, not yet. And right now they set up for a... Slash into the B site, throwing a Molotov to the balcony. They've seen players playing up there, whether it's mostly to the their perspective left side on the edge of the platform. Kusta now jumps right back up on top of it, looking for the pixel peak, and there's the first cross. It's going to be grenades coming up his direction. He'll throw a Molotov. One player's ahead of it. Two players are ahead of it now. Now they just burn alive into it. Tons of damage from the Mollies. Kusta will wisely just fall back, especially after losing Freakazoid. He's taking a shot to the face again. He finally falls. A three on four disadvantage to Ghost Gaming, but due to the Molotov damage from Kusta, it makes it more than possible for the retake. They just need this opener, and there it is. Steel has the first spotting as well, spamming through the bench, and Malbs is beginning to evaporate, but he's still around. Wardell takes his off, sending just a warning shot over towards the bench, a harassing shot before he sends one between the eyes. 3v2, man advantage earned right back from Ghost. And it's just Davies. Last man standing. He's got a shot. He's up in the apartments. The bomb is planted for him with a smoke on it. He's got to worry about this one. Wardell, though, has the uh, firepower to pierce. Yeah, absolutely. Great round out of Wardell. You see him force his way into that B bomb site. Steel throws a Molotov towards the bench area and actually Molotov's off Malbs. Wardell hits a great quick shot there, and then towards the van player as well, hitting another phenomenal shot, finishing it up on Davies with that wall bang, and Ghost Gaming are moving on to that 12-2 scoreline. Great shooting. From, there's the first and almost the second. But this, wall, that wall, this bang. wall bang shot, yep. he's ready for it. There's only one place he could possibly be, and that's where you expect your T to be from, uh, defending that default plant position. So Infinity are back into full rifles. Max loss bonus plus their uh, extra 800 bucks from the plant. Still drops a smoke to be able to still be able to peer over the top of this one. Uh, Infinity looking. Oh, jeez. Oh, a little bit of miscommunication. Wardell says thanks very Just much. Just absolutely Actually, destroys him <laughs> with that AUG. <laughs> crushes him. All right, Infinity now looking at a very slow round here. They are starting to progress towards lower B. We're seeing smokes come out towards top mid as Steel does peek down towards Cruisin. We'll find the frag, but look at this. Wardell is so aggressed towards middle right now. He's able to shut that area down completely. Well, see, now if I'm Infinity, I'm thinking we killed Steel towards the underpass side. We just got shot from Wardell at top mid. Wardell, in my eyes, if I was playing for Infinity, I would think, okay, we can collapse on Wardell and possibly kill him to even this out to a 3v3. They instead don't do that. They leave Davies back towards top mid or towards the backside of the apartments yeah. to, to contend with the long flank. Wardell's just jumping, standing in mid. Steel with the assist, but still it's a 3v2. And Ghost, as wild and wicked as they have been, uh, there is no rest for the wicked. Kusta is still dialed in on his scope. He's got points buried on that left side, but just as he jumps up, he almost gets timed on, but that's bomb spotted. Now you've got Neptune to shift out of his default position to arrive in for the, the, uh, the support. All right, Davies in this one on two now. 20 seconds on the clock. I don't even think he's going to go for this one. I think he is going to... Nope, okay, so he's going to go for it, but with only 14 seconds, and he's got to get up towards the B Palace area. I don't think he's got this one. Uh, yeah, uh, running into this one with six seconds left. Uh, he's, he's here for the experience. He get out of dodge. He's here for the experience. Oh, he's got the he's opportunity He's here for the round Okay, no. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Ghost Gaming are going to take the half 13-2, to two, Dallas. Absolutely dominating Infinity. It was a strong start regardless, but Infinity did get two rounds early on, which made me feel like this was going to be a competitive match. They uh, tugged at my heartstrings, though. Yeah, it definitely wasn't what I expected from the Infinity side. I thought a couple more rounds, but unable to do so. Yeah, yep, so we've got more action coming. The uh, first half's finished in just this first map of Ghost Gaming versus Infinity. Stick around. You're watching the Pro League.
Hey y'all, welcome back to the Pro League. It is ghost gaming all day, and one of my predictions was completely wrong in this setup. I said Freakazoid was going to end up top fragging, but everybody else on the team is fragging so hard, he is bottom frag. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. Everybody's doing, I mean, it's a five kill spread between your bottom to top frag. Wardell on top at 16, Freak on bottom, power bottom at 11. <laughs> Okay, and look at this from Ghost Gaming. Very quickly towards B bomb site, Wardell catches Mobs, who is being boosted. Now Neptune's in the site, taking down points as Wardell takes down Cruisin. And just like that, Ghost Gaming have found themselves on their way to their 14th, unless Spamsy and Davies can shut this one down. There's step That's one. one. That's step one. Now they just need to catch a couple players out of position. But Ghost Gaming have been, been given time to settle in. Two players over towards the van, two over on Catwalk Arches. There's your first draw of blood. It's Spamsy left alone, 1v3, oh. and reloading his magazine will be met with a hail of gunfire coming his way. Ghost Gaming managed to take that three-man stack on the B site, no problem. Yeah, 14 to two now is what Ghost Gaming's scoreline is gonna look like. Infinity, are they gonna save? Or are they gonna force by in hopes to keep Ghost Gaming off that 15th round here? Decisions, decisions with some massive implications. Yeah, this is uh, arguably the, the easiest match for Ghost Gaming in the group stage, this group stage. Yeah. But it is going to be a, a more and more difficult road as they progress through the days. Uh, but Infinity are, are here to win. They're going to put up a, as best of a shot as they can at this one. This round, though, is just vanilla USPs. They want to be able to put up some rifles in the following if they can, but they'd be playing for four overtime. Uh, and would need themselves 13 rounds. Kusta. Tap, tap. Nice little tap a tap -a with that MP5 from the bottom of connector. Steel now aggressing towards the end of B platform. We'll be He's making a little bit of contact, but I that's about we'll it. I don't think we'll end up seeing that smoke from Steel. Hey, Davies has himself a USP, but Kusta just jumps around the corner, gets a one and done, and they out. A lot of, lot of SMG's kills coming into that round, actually. Yep. Uh, all but one. Neptune got the one with his rifle. 15-2, Infinity have 13 rounds to go. Maybe we'll see that one chance. One chance for Steel to drop that smoke on play. I imagine he'd even do it right now. Yeah, I could definitely see him going for it right off the bat. Nonetheless, though, Infinity with those rifles in hand. Cruzen opted for a Famas here in favor of a lot of utility. Not a bad idea out of him, but none of them have kits, Dallas. So if we do move into a post-plant scenario, it could be very scary for the CTs. Top mid, for the most part, just about everybody for Ghost. Spamsy's here, he's blind as a bat, but then again, so is Ghost. Freakazoid and Kusta kind of get stumped up on their approach for entries. They've got some fire coming off from Catwalk, but nobody's coming in through Connector, which may have been what Ghost wanted to do all the time. 3v4 right now, Infinity have themselves a second breath of life, but Kusta, just as the smoke fades, comes up through it and sees that connector's clear. It's going to give a little bit of room for Neptune as he goes around Catwalk into the ladder room. That's huge. Yeah, and now Ghost are going to try and flex on this position of Neptune. If Neptune's able to find anything, he isn't going to be able to as points moves his way out of window now. This is a great position out of points, playing passively on the window boost as well as anybody coming up towards that jungle area. At the same time, we are going to see Freakazoid starting to pressure the upper B tunnels, not drawing over any rotations. Actually, yeah, for a brief moment, a points bit. did start coming over towards market, and Kusta poked and prodded his way into that A bomb site, but is going to opt against it. Yeah, Kusta throws a Molotov out in behind Cruzen who falls back into the ladder room. <laughs> oh, God, Neptune's up here, dude. This is oh, dangerous. No. This is back-to-back. -back. 
Neither player recognizes that they're there, but I would assume what is that happening? Neptune there you figures go. it out first. Yeah, Neptune has more angles to check, especially with two of his teammates leaving his his backside and moving into the A site. He's going to clear his six. 3v3 right now, Freakazoid and Kusta working their way into the entry, but not that much utility for a, a clean plant here. They're going to plant it to the safe side of Triple Box as Davies comes out trying to stop it. The bomb will be planted, and it costs Freakazoid his life. Neptune and Kusta. Kusta gets melted through the box. It's all Neptune. It would need the ace clutch, but that's not going to be. Infinity have marked up their first round for their CT side. Yeah, fairly clean round coming from Infinity, all things considered, finding themselves down two men very early on, but they're going to tighten it up, and they're going to be able to actually close that one off as Ghost Gaming starting to falter there as they moved in towards that A bomb site. A nice little setup from Infinity towards the CT spawn. And Ghost Gaming, well, they got to try for it one more time. Infinity now third round on the board for the CTs. That was a really clean round from Infinity. That, All that, things considered, yeah. I mean, that was... I mean, they lost Cruz into a little bit of timing there. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that ladder room got a little funny. But, well, a little hairy there. But still, Infinity in the 3v3 actually looked... It was pretty really clean. Good. Yeah, it was fairly I mean, clean. That was, that was strong. This round uh, devolves to a quick peek from Neptune in A main. It ends up being an even trade, which Ghost are going to be pretty happy about that one. They hold the weapons advantage with Wardell's op in play. A lot of those players are leaning on the B apartment side right now, with Freakazoid being your one man out, your one man army over towards the mid end. And he wants to be able to either catch rotators if the, the three players are able to get into the B site cleanly, mm -hmm. which would be difficult. But if they get casualties coming into the B site, Freakazoid would probably take a more proactive role in directly supporting rather than lurking and catching rotation. Okay, I could see the execute coming in now as we are seeing the ghost members starting to creep up towards B. A nice little flash coming in from Steel. Create a little bit of disruption within that B bomb site. And Wardell poking on in with that AWP. But look at all the while, a little bit of a flank, a play being made by Spamzy here, making his way towards the T spawn area. If he can actually get to these B tunnels before the execute comes in, Infinity could find themselves on towards the fourth round. Now, Mobs and Cruzen have a great crossfire set up right now. Mobs is looking towards the catwalk in, so they do have some weakness here, and Mobs is giving at least some respect to that end. Cruzen looking for the flash. There's the drop in. Kusta will sacrifice himself for one. A smoke dropped in here from Cruz and it's going to give him a lot more wiggle room. As a matter of fact, here's Spamzy on that flank. It go. finally evolves, leaving Freakazoid all alone. He does have to take this proactive role. 1v3, his position's been sold. And with only 14 seconds left, he's looking for damage. Doing a ton of it at this point. Points doesn't need to repeak anything. Freakazoid senses blood in the water of points being so low, and he will step forward a bit too far. Yeah, another nice round from Infinity. Great initiative from Spamzy there. Even though he's in a precarious spot, doesn't know where any of the T's are. He takes it on himself there to push through those B tunnels and actually head up for the flank. And that's exactly what Infinity needs. Still plenty of rounds, however, needed for the CT side if they want to make this one happen. 11 in a row, Dallas, is what they're going to have to aim for if they want to tie this one up. Hey, they got themselves an easy round right here, right? Right? Yeah, a couple right? pistols. Right? Anything can happen, though. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Both teams were able to take ecos off of one another in the first half. So you're never out, out of the woods. Never, ever, ever. At this level of gameplay on NA side, it can get dangerous real quick. All it takes is a player like Freakazoid ending up with a rifle in his hands or Wardell or Kusta ending up with an op in his hand in their hands. It's oh, it's going to be a run boost. Yeah, I believe I can fly. There. I'm looking well, for the shot from points. He's going to witness. It's actually a flashbang that assists the run boost out and in. They're going to run straight down mid. And the bomb carrier of all people is the one player that can't get in there. Spamzy falling back, firing, trying to cover himself. Chooses that his sidearm is more valuable. And Neptune throwing a pop flash in. Spamzy actually ahead of that one. So Steel's left alone. No chance with just a Glock. And points will finish the job. Yeah, he almost gets points there, though, down to 23 HP. But Infinity come out of that round very clean, keeping all the members of their side alive, able to build up some money, ensure the fact that they don't need to drop anybody or anybody's going to be shortchanged on utility. They're going to have everything they need to keep themselves in this game. Ghost Gaming, on the other hand, well, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle by here. As we're going to see some SMGs hit the field in efforts for Ghost Gaming now to buy all the way into this. They're looking hurting for firepower. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, 
damage that needs to be dealt for Ghost on this round. It might just be a flat-out B rush. Flashbangs falling out of the windows right now all over the place. Molotov's actually overshooting the van, but Molbs gets three in three different styles. Grenade, Molly, then the AUG. <laughs> I would love to see him pull out his sidearm and finish Neptune right here, but Spamzy might finish the job. Neptune rushing Spamzy, gets a kill. I, I want him to see him throw this off off the map. That would be... Uh, Optimum, but we know that Ghosts are kind of playing by the seat of their pants. They don't. They don't have to play optimally. They don't have Neptune to. Neptune might actually find himself a frag here. No, do it. Oh, he's got an angle over the smoke, just looking for him to stand there and then line up the shot through the smoke. Oh, but there comes that deeper smoke now that completely cuts Neptune's angle off. He's got a couple people flanking in behind him towards T spawn. They'll be there in about 10, oh. 15 seconds. Neptune, the opportunity to actually isolate these two 1v1s towards B halls here. Yeah, the and smoke's going to fade, into the site. and it's going to get a little awkward real quick. Who spot two first? Oh, Cruisin' first wins. Cruisin', every time I see Cruisin's name, uh, you remember Cruisin' USA? Yeah, for N64 yeah. or N64? the arcade game. Yeah, I was just about to the say N64 game. or the arcade game that was yeah. in every pizza place. You ever. press down on the pedal twice and it makes you like rev up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the execute coming in. An attempted rush from Ghost Gaming was met with heavy resistance, primarily from Mobs, and that's more than what you ask ask for for your initial B side contact. If your yeah. if your B side contactor can get one kill and delay the push, that's all he needs to do. All right, Ghost Gaming on to yet another save here, moving very quickly to mid once again. Up through the connector now, you are going to see them on the edge of this smoke as Steel gets his way up towards Catwalk. I do imagine he might be going for a window boost momentarily. It does look like Mulbs wants to aggress. Steel's going to take advantage of this smoke and get into cat room. Great patience from Infinity. They just, they give up what they had given them. I mean, no sense in taking a fight against the rushing mid. Lay back. Let them come across these angles that you have superior firepower on. Ghost wanted to take a fight in mid. They wanted to catch that player in window. They wanted to catch the player in connector, but there was no offer from Infinity. Yeah, Steel knows that Points is in this window area. Points able to take down Steel, though. That's some nice shooting out of him. Will prompt Freakazoid now to start a response by heading up towards that connector as Neptune heads out into the A bomb site. Ghost Gaming looking for some frags. There's the first line of sight made against the CT, it looks like, and it's rewarded with a kill. Assist from Steel, and Freakazoid gets the kill. But there's been, so, like, look at Davies playing so hidey hole right now in Firebox. He'll secure the round. Neptune did have himself a nice little one dig, but at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. Infinity, though, are starting to make this a pretty competitive game. If they manage to pick up. One or two more rifle rounds, they are right into the wheelhouse. Yeah, now I'm starting to think that it just came down to the side of Infinity there, starting on T side. Maybe they just got off to a really slow start because now looking at their CT, they're picking up rounds in very confident fashion, very convincing fashion. I definitely think that if they had a stronger CT side or if they started on CT side first, came out of the gates really strong, they could have actually turned the tide of this game or made it a lot closer. Yeah, their CT side looks clean. It really, it really does. So again, B site grenades being traded. Steel doesn't have his smoke to do his thing, but he's been given plenty of opportunities to do it. Maybe he just realizes that it's uh, it's kind of an obvious obvious trick at this point. But flashes into the site, allowing Steel to take a couple peeks. With good eyes on him. I would have never been able to spot Mulbs that was standing up on top of that angle on that box. Doing pretty good damage to him. Down to 64. And mid control again, he's yielded by Infinity. That allows Neptune to get in the connector. That allows Wardell to look down uh, Catwalk as well. Yep. And Freakazoid's going to be coming in to assist. Total control of this middle area right now, Ghost Gaming has. And it does look like Freakazoid with a little bit of contact. Not much going on for him otherwise. But Ghost Gaming not taking it too quick in this round. I do imagine yeah. at some point now they are going to be heading up Catwalk as we do see the players moving up onto that Catwalk boost. Here is Wardell. Davies is working a, uh, at least an informational flank. Davies is all the way to the backside of Palace. And as Ghost Gaming start to set up for the B site, I'm surprised. Now you're starting to see the rotations come in. It might be a shade late. Good headshot in there. Cruzen will finish the job. He's got a lot of help in here, too. Freakazoid, though, he's shown up to the party. It was Kusta that got that kill. Now Freakazoid chimes in. It's a three on three with 25 seconds left. Spamzy steps out, but steps out too wide. Freakazoid saving lives. A three on one now for Davies, the man that was giving all the intel to the team, but nobody moved out of their default positions. They stood still. They hoped again for a beautiful straight hold from Malbs on the on the B side initial contact. Davies is now left alone. He's got Neptune completely flanked. Showed him his backside. Good chance right here for Davies against two wounded players. 
Yeah, he is going to be moving up towards that catwalk, towards that get right area, able to take down Freakazoid, leaving it on to Kusta now, and Kusta is able to connect on the shot, 16 to 7. Ghost Gaming able to finally close this one out after five rounds in a row from Infinity. Yeah. Looking like they started to come to life. Yeah, they did. They they did come to life. Not just starting to come to life. They they really looked completely different. Night and day between their T and their CT side. And I love being proved, proven wrong. I thought that it was going to be Infinity.